So hello, hello everyone. Hello, hello everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Vladimir, thank you for having me once again. It's I'm very happy to, to be here. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of my background, as Vladimir said, you know, I've been working in the industry for quite a quite many quite too many years with him. The same amount of time as he has been. I teach at Centennial College here in Toronto. And today I'm here to talk to you about how to go beyond the codes. And uh, before I get to that, let's just get one thing clear. My name is not Anderson, okay? So be careful about that. Usually I tell my students that if they call me Anderson, if they write my name as Anderson, I'm going to take one percent point of their final grades. But uh, usually I, li I like to, to bring that up just because as coders, we have to pay attention to the small little details. You know, it's not just about my name, but it's about the little details. And if you go to my name is not Anderson, it is a real site. <laughs> OK, so you can you can check that out. With that said, uh, before I get to the to the juice of our conversation today, I want to share this picture as Vladimir was saying. Uh, we came here together, so this is the year that we came together to Canada many, many years ago. And I'm trying to work out my beard to be as sharp as his, you know. I'm, I'm doing a bad job, but I'm trying hard, okay? <laughs> anyway, a little bit of uh, our past together Could there. Let me interrupt you there. I mean, that's the thing that, that some people do improve and some don't. <laughs> <laughs> and he's an example of that those that do not and I'm an example of those that do. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this thing about going beyond the code. What is that? Beyond the code is uh, a way, a strategy or a series of strategies that uh, hopefully you can use to overcome some of the challenges that we have when we are beginning our careers. No matter no matter which technical field you have chosen, maybe it's mobile development, maybe it's something else, but I know that this group is, is very much geared towards mobile development. But let's talk a little bit about the challenge, the challenge of getting in the market, of getting our first job, you know? First one, you don't have experience. Yeah, I know that, we know that. You don't have experience, this is, uh, let's say, you are starting to apply to jobs and people are not, maybe you don't find jobs that are I would say beginners friendly there are, that are, um, you know, for junior positions and you don't have experience to show. That's a problem. Yes, that's a problem, but there are ways to go around that. Another problem here, you don't have too much to show. You don't have, yes, you may have done some, hopefully you may have done some projects during your time at the college and hopefully you can use that as part of your portfolio, but still, you wish you may wish that you'd have more to show. Something else here, you know, you don't know that many people. Maybe you are new to Canada or maybe you are just starting your career. You don't know too many people in the industry. You don't have a network yet. So when I say beyond the codes, I'm trying to quote unquote fix those problems. They are not that trivial to be fixed, but hopefully you can get something out of here today that hopefully can help you to fix one of those problems. Who, uh, what do you think? I mean, can you relate to those problems? I mean, you don't have experience. You don't have too much to show. I mean, can you relate to those things? Can you guys relate to those things? Any, does that make sense? Yep. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Very good. Very good. Okay. So. Let's try to solve them. How can we solve those challenges? Or at least how can we minimize them? How can we mitigate them? Okay. So what I'm about to present here is not just things that came out of my head or came out of my readings. It's things that I have discussed with a hundred... Frozen? frozen? Is that okay? All good now? For a second there, yeah, it, it's showing here that my system has low resources, so it may happen usually when uh, I'm using Teams that shows up quite a lot. Um, but let's see, let's see. I mean, again, keep keep 
uh, feedback loop there just to let me know how things are flowing, okay? Back now? All good? Okay. Okay, so as I was saying, what I'm about to discuss is not just things that come out of my mind or that I read somewhere. Those are things that I have discussed and my guests over the course of 100 episodes that I had for the podcast, uh, Solo Coder, that they told me, that they demonstrated that their, their journeys, they in a way, they boiled down to them using some of those strategies, okay? So, again, if you want to drop by to solocoder.com, you're going to see 100 interviews that I have done with tech professionals from all places, from all kinds of different backgrounds, from all different technologies as well, okay? So, when I discussed with them, one of the things that I, I saw in common, that they build their career creating content. Now, content is a, can be can be many different things for different people. Content might be a blog post, a tweet, a LinkedIn post, a Medium post, a, I mean, I'm not into TikTok nor anything like, nor even Instagram, but it can be things uh, shared on your social medias. Am I frozen again? Yeah, indeed. So it's good. <laughs> so is that, is that, is that, can you hear me well? Can you hear me well? Yes, yes. You, you, you're freezing from, from time to time. Yeah. I don't, I, maybe, I, maybe, uh, maybe if, you, if you let only Zoom work in, it would help. I don't know. I'm not sure if you can do that. Yeah, I mean, let me tell you, Zoom, I usually have those kinds of problems with Zoom. I, that's why I don't use Zoom, but uh, let me quit some stuff here. Uh, let me see. Okay, let me quit two more things here. And yeah, I think that's that's the maximum that I can quit. Uh, let me let me try something else here. Okay, so I I've closed a few things. I still see low resources message, so let's keep moving. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So first first pillar of uh, what I'm going to describe as a framework is content, putting something out there in the universe. It might be a piece that you write about. It might be. Uh, a GitHub project that you have contributed to, but creating content is one of the pillars, okay? And again, we're gonna go through more details. I'm not gonna leave it superficial like that, okay? So content is one, building your confidence is another one. When I talk to a lot of former students of mine, they they report to me that one of their biggest challenge is overcoming their lack of confidence. And let me tell you, I cannot learn you how to have confidence. Confidence is built over time when you are practicing what you are working with. That the practice will give you confidence. So there's no other way around it. I cannot be talking about confidence here and you're going to gain confidence because of my talk. No, you're going to have to apply what you are learning to build confidence. And I'm going to bring some ideas here on how you can apply what you are learning and build your confidence as a consequence, okay? And the last one that I mentioned as well is connections. How can you build connections in the industry? Let me tell you this, where you guys are right now, look around yourselves there and this network that you're building there will help in the future. Look at me and value me. We are here 25, almost 30 years later and I'm here helping him with his class and that all began almost 30 years ago. So again, look at each other there and you might be having friends there that you're going to carry for the rest of your life. So connections is all about that. It's all about building your network. Okay. And again, I'll give you some pointers that hopefully will help you to build those as well. Okay. Let's break it down one by one here. So content is all about what you know, but not only about what you know, but what you are trying to know, what you are studying, okay? And sharing what you are learning, sharing what you know, and building your brain. You're going to say, yes, but 
I don't have a brand. I mean, I'm, I'm not a company. Well, guess what? When you're trying to find a job in the market, you are a brand. You are trying to sell yourself to that company. So why not, why not help them buy you, buy what you are trying to sell them? And what I'm trying to pitch here is the fact that if you can put something out there in the internet, either via blog or via any other medium that might be, uh, I would say, more natural to you, those things, they will help someone that is making a decision to hire you or the next person. That may make a difference for them to hire you. I'm going to tell you this. About uh, a year and a half ago, I was hired in one of the, in, in my last job, I was hired in one of the things that my boss told me that moved the needle towards my profile was that I had a podcast and he was intrigued with the podcast and that made my profile stand out. Okay, so building content, we're going to get more specifics a little bit later. Building your confidence, it's all about who you are and working on real projects. But how can I work on real projects, you may ask, if I don't have experience, if I don't have a client, if I don't have a job yet, how can I work on real projects? We're going to talk about that. And it's about building yourself, building your confidence, building your knowledge, not, not just your knowledge, but your, your experience. Confidence comes with experiences experience in working with real projects will give you that will give you the experience that you need to be more confident okay and connections is about who you know it's about connecting with people in the industry i'm going to give you some pointers on that and building your network now i have a good friend of mine which by the way he's around here and he asks me this question quite a lot you know okay all great all handy dandy very nice what you're saying but give me the recipe. Tell me the steps. How can I get started? How can I do this? Give me one, two, three so I can follow and I can achieve whatever you are trying to sell me. And that's why, and that's why I really, I keep going back to this point with, with Vladimir quite a lot because I like this. It's, it brings whatever theory I'm trying to sell him, it brings down to earth. So I have to prove them. Okay, do one, two, three. So I want to give you a few recipes here. Now, Will, do, will this recipe give you the final job that you are looking for? Or this is it, this is all, do this and you are done? Well, I would say that this is part of a puzzle of different pieces that you can, you can use some of those pieces here uh, to put your puzzle together for anyone that, that you are trying to sell your services, to sell yourself, to become an employee of their company. Okay, so how can we get started? So Content-wise, I recommend a blog. And once again, my buddy there, he was questioning me the other day. He had the audacity of questioning me and ask, is blog still relevant? I mean, really? Are you going to talk again about blog? And I said, yes, I'm going to talk about blog again. And the reason is blog is something simple that any one of you can start in the next 10 minutes. It does, it does require a lot. And the reason why I'm pointing to Hashnode, Hashnode is a blogging platform, self-hosted, you don't have to install anything, and you open an account, and in five minutes you are blogging on their platform. Five minutes. Uh, the next question that you may have in mind is, what am I gonna talk about? I don't know much, I don't have much experience. Guess what? People out there, they don't know much either. There are people, of course, that are more advanced than you, people that are less advanced than you. And let me tell you this, the reason for blogging is not to become popular, is not to become famous, is not to get money from it. Keep two things in mind when I'm talking about blogging. It will benefit you in two different ways. One is when you write either about what you know or about what you are learning, guess what? You are learning that topic deeper. You are going in depth because now you are trying to explain this to somebody else. When you write in a blog format, you're trying to articulate your ideas. In the process of articulating your ideas, you are, you have naturally to get to understand that topic a little bit better. So just by doing that, you are becoming a better developer. 
you are learning more. So just for that reason alone, blogging is a good, I would say, an easy way to get some content out there. Again, so build yourself and and um, get a deeper understanding about the topic that you are learning, that you are in the process of learning, or the topic that you may know already. Now, that's the first one. The second reason is now you can show that blog to a hiring manager. And guess what? Not too many people do that. Not too many people have blogs, even though you may say, but blogs, it's 2023. Why are you talking about this? Because guess what? Not, yes, we see a lot of blogs out there, but let me tell you, your competition will not be doing that that much. Will not be doing that at all, most likely. Most likely the people that will be competing with you for that job position, they don't have a blog. So again, it's a way to differentiate yourself, okay? So maybe write about the last thing that you have learned, or maybe if you don't have any idea, I'm gonna try to show this here. Uh, I don't know if they are fully operational, but if you are trying to find more ideas of what to blog about, who has heard about chat GPT? Anyone? Anyone? Chat GPT? I mean, who has not? Who has not heard about this bloody, <laughs> bloody thing? So go to chat GPT if it's still open, because I think that people were telling me that it's becoming close uh, very short. But let's give it a try here. Let's see. Provide three um, simple mobile development topics for me to uh, blog about. Let's see what it comes up with. Let's see. That's what I was thinking. That's the that's next step. You see, look, creating a responsive design for mobile apps, implementing push notifications in mobile app. I mean, those are three pretty good topics, you know? But what if you don't like those? You can say, hey, I don't like those, give me three more. And then the next step could be, now write me those three blogs. Now, I don't recommend you to do that. I mean, you can use that as a seed idea for you to get going, for your juices to be flowing, but uh, use it as, a, as an idea, okay? So don't, don't just copy and paste. I mean, plenty of people will be doing that and very shortly uh, there will be mechanisms out there, I'm pretty sure, to detect those kinds of things. So again, get some ideas or just Google, just Google three ideas. It doesn't matter if somebody else has already written about that. You can read what they, wrote and you can put your spin on that you can put your maybe you you read what they have posted you've tried and now we're going to report your experience because guess what your experience is unique so even though you may say oh this is too basic and nobody will care about that but again remember you're not doing this for anybody else out there other than you learning the topic deeply and you using that as one more thing to showcase to a potential employer in the future, okay? But I'm just gonna give a, a, a quick pause here to see if anyone has a, anyone has any questions or anything. I think we're good. All good, okay, so third one is, you know, everybody, almost everybody, you know, is reluctant on hitting the publish button. But I can tell you this, the biggest worry that I see people having is, what is it that people will think about me when they see this? But guess what? Guess what? <laughs> this, this sounds a little bit paradoxical, but nobody cares about that. That's, that's, the, that's the funny thing. Nobody cares about that. You are the only one that, that, that is worried about that. Okay? So hit the publish button. Nobody will read it anyway. Again, you are not doing this for, for your friends to read or for your colleagues to read. You are doing this to build your profile. Keep that in mind. It's all about you. It's all about your profile. And of course, if somebody else come across your site because they are searching, that's a bonus. That's a bonus, but don't go expecting that, okay? If you want to go with a ninja move and you want to have your own domain, ederson.com, edersonoliveira.com, you can register on a site like uh, Namebrite quite cheaply, I don't make any commissions from the site that I'm recommending them. I'm just recommending them because I have used them quite a lot in the past and it's quite cheap to keep a domain. It, it shows that you are a little bit more professional and you can hook up your domain 
with your first name, last name, dot com or, or dot whatever it is, you can hook up to uh, your your blog on Hashnode, okay? And it costs about twelve dollars a year to keep a uh, domain. In. It will look more professional. Again, it's all about giving you a little bit of of an edge, okay? Here's an example. If you look at uh, the so-called episode episode seventy nine. This young lady, her name is Victoria. She lives, um, actually she studied here in Toronto, but she lives now in Singapore. And after blogging for about a year, she was able to get a job at PayPal. And she told me during the episode that one of the reasons why she thinks she got the job is because they saw their uh, her consistency on blogging, on her personal blog. And I'm not talking about five, 10 years ago. This was mid-pandemic. Uh, this was about one or two years ago. So again, this is not old stuff. This is very, very recent stuff, okay? So get some inspiration from, from my friend Victoria here. Next one, building your confidence. What can we do to build your confidence? I told you that building confidence is about applying your skills. It's about um, having experiences practical experiences, real projects. But again, you may say, but Edison, I don't have a, a job yet. So how can I have real projects under my belt to show? And you can have that via open source. I'm a big open source proponent. I have participated in open source projects quite a lot, not necessarily as a coder. There are different ways that you can participate in an open source uh, project, but let's focus on the coding part. So, First of all, I recommend that you understand the process of contributing to open source first. Uh, I will be making this presentation available and all of those links, you can, you can scan the scan code here or you can click this link. Actually, I can, I can open that, but let me see here. Okay, so you can, by this link, you can understand how you can contribute to open source first. So this is a, a nice uh, GitHub repository that shows step-by-step step what you have to do to be able to contribute to open source, which by the way, the biggest place, the biggest repository of open source projects uh, is on GitHub, github.com. So this link will point you to a place that you can read about. What should I do to contribute to an open source project? It talks about the, the process. Because there is a little bit of involvement. Uh, it's not very, I would say, straightforward on how you can contribute to an open source project. Now, one thing is to understand the process. This is about the process. But you may you may ask, but Edison, how can I find a project to work with? Yes, I got you. You gave me the pro the process, but then it becomes about picking up the technology. Which technology do you want to? contribute to is that, I don't know, it's that Android mobile development, is that iOS mobile development? What is it? Or any other technology out there? So pick something, pick one. I, I don't, I wouldn't say that there is, uh, you should pick this technology or that technology. For any technology, there will be an open source project available that you can contribute to. So pick something that is within your interests and then join a project. Now, this link here, uh, let me see if I can open that. This second link, it shows it. It's another repository on GitHub that shows a list of projects from different technologies. As you can see here, you have all kinds of technologies here. You can select one of those, for example, uh, let's say here, Say, uh, do we have a mobile here or something? Actually, I'm not seeing. Let's see here. Oh yeah, Swift, Swift, right here. Okay, great. So you come here to Swift, and then, well, this one has only one repo, but that that's okay. I'm sure that there are plenty other ones. But bottom line is that it's showing here projects from that technology that are beginners friendly. That's that's the type of thing that you are looking for. You are looking for. Uh, a potential project that is friendly to people that are just getting started. And you have labels for 
uh, issues like good for first use, help wanted, uh, good first use, good, uh, again, good first use, easy, easy. That's the type of, of uh, tag that you are looking for, label that you're looking for uh, to be able to get to a project that is not very intimidating, okay? Look for this kind of uh, project that are welcoming beginners. Sometimes some projects, they only want more advanced uh, professionals and it might not be the case, but this is a place that you can, with this link here, that you can start looking at potential, easy to get started projects that you can start contributing to open source. And then again, when you are in front of a, a hiring manager, you can show your GitHub, you can show your contributions, you can show your little map on GitHub with, doesn't need to be necessarily a lot of contributions, but some contributions. So that's how one of the ways that I recommend that you can get started building your confidence with open source. At the same time, you are building, you know, when you join an open source project, you are also building, guess what? Your connections, you are connecting with people, you're getting to know people, okay? So that's the second one, open source. I'm gonna give you a ninja move here. If you don't find a project to work with, maybe you create your own project. Again, it, I've never done this, but it's definitely viable, it's definitely possible. And we have people like, like Caleb here, that uh, he draws a full-time income of over $100,000, $130,000 a year, working on his open source projects. He has two or three projects, and his full-time gig is just working on those projects. And in this episode, episode, episode number 56, we have discussed all about his trajectory, working on his open source projects. And again, have a look. Maybe it's something that will inspire you, okay? You don't have to do exactly what he's doing, but he brings a lot of good points there. Great. Third one from the third pillar, we are talking about now about connections. How can I build connections? And my, I, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of meetups. Meetups, that's where I used to have a business before. That's where I built my business. I still have it, but that's where I built my business. I built my business with clients that I met in meetups. Now, you're not selling there in, uh, you know, necessarily your, your contracting services, but in meetups, guess what happens? And now that we are over, at least mostly over COVID, that meetups are starting to become face-to-face uh, -face again, you have a chance to network. You have a chance to talk to people there. Um, and guess what? In those meetups, in those technical meetups, you have technical people going there, but you also have people from companies that are trying to hire people that have your profile, that have profile of the audience that is going to that kind of meetup. So you have, yes, you have people that are just your peers there, but you have people there that might be looking for their next hire. They are there just trying to spot someone. And that's a good way to connect with people in the industry. Let me tell you again, I, I own a lot of my career here in Canada due to meetups. I've been participating in meetups and back then it used to be called user groups. But since 2006, I have been actively engaged in different meetups. The last, my, my current job, because I have a full-time uh, gig as well, my full-time job, I got because I've joined a meetup and I got closer to the organization of that meetup and my boss is one of the organizers of that meetup. And guess what? It's, I'm a proof that meetups work because it has, been, it has been working for me all those years. And even about a year and a half ago, via meetup, I got my latest job, okay? Great, so how do you work with meetups? Well, go to meetup.com, search for the technology that you are looking for, and then join the meetup. Hopefully, you're gonna find a local meetup that, will, that you can join, that you can participate. Hopefully, they are active because there are meetups that are, you know, they die out. Some of them die out. Over time, they, they become inactive. But hopefully, you can find one that is active that, that when you check the events of that meetup, that uh, in the near future, maybe they have a meeting scheduled for the next month or so, and then join, and then go there, 
and interact with people. Talk to the organization team. How do I know who is the organization team? Well, there will be someone there maybe taking names or maybe presenting the, the guest speaker. So those are the people that you get closer to. Okay, again, building your network doesn't cost anything, costs a little bit of time, but hey, maybe we don't have money, maybe we have time, okay? Join the meetup and go to the next event. It's that simple, it's that simple. And again, it, 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 it sounds so trivial, because it is, it is trivial. And I don't see too many people doing those kinds of things. I don't see. Now, if you want to go Ninja Move again, volunteer. Now that meetups are becoming face-to-face uh, -face again, they always need someone to help with stuff. Maybe to bring the pizza, to buy the pizza, because sometimes you, know, you just have to have a networking aspect to it and people bring pizza, some, some pops, it's usually sponsored by the, the meetup itself, but they, the organization team, they usually need people to help them out. So volunteer to help them out, volunteer to help the organization, volunteer at some point to help uh, to present something. Meetups, if they happen often, they are always on the lookout for the next guest speaker. And guess what? You can become the next guest speaker. Edson, I don't know a lot, how can I be a guest speaker. Well, I'll leave it up to you to, I say, come to terms at some point and say, hey, maybe I'm going to pick this topic here and I'm going to talk to them. Let me tell everybody that I speak, that I spoke with during the podcast, they all had that first uh, moment in front of the meetup that they were sweaty, that they were nervous and majority I don't recall anyone reporting an experience that the audience was not supportive of them. Everybody had an, a supportive audience. People that are watching you present, they want to be that you, they want you to be successful there. So they are there not looking for you to fail, but looking to cheer you. So again, I cannot tell you enough about how meetups can make a change, can be a, a powerful agent in your trajectory okay and here is another story from Sandra she is from Germany um, she used to be a very stubborn uh, young lady and she left home to go to another city to study and she was having a hard time making a living and she used to go she shared with me during the podcast that she used to go to meetups just to eat to eat the food that they that they, they served the meetup. And then eventually she started to, and she was studying uh, coding technology, and eventually she started to, you know, people were seeing what she was doing, and she was interested, and she was starting to contribute as well, and she got invited to present. So again, from, from being hungry, from being a, a starving student, to become a speaker now that she has a, I think that she she works if I'm not mistaken at Microsoft in Germany so another story that a meetup changed her life okay so again get some inspiration there episode number 62 okay so 207 here I still have a few minutes I'm, I'm bringing things to a conclusion here and I want to open to to questions to you no know, anything from you guys. So again, just recap, just wrap things up here. Content, blogging. Confidence, open source. Connections, meetups. Ederson, again, will this do the job? Is that just what I need? Well, I think that this is a very, very good first start, you know, a very, very good start. And depending on how you use them, it can be an explosive combination for your career. Now, don't expect things to happen from one day to the next, okay? This is something that you plant and you're gonna be, you know, you don't, you don't make friendships over one single appearance in a meetup. You cultivate those, those friendships over time. You build your confidence over time practicing. Content as well, you build it over time. I think that content is the one that I would say that can give you almost immediate results because you are doing that initially for yourself to learn deeper that topic, you know, but 
those are the three aspects that I would like to share with you today. Uh, the initial, I would say, goal was how to find your dream job. But I think that we can rephrase this a little bit. And with those elements, I'm sure that your dream job is the one that will be looking for you. How your dream job can find you. And that's what happens when you when you do those kinds of things, when you go out there, and that's why I call that's why I call this beyond the code. Because you have to leave your computer, you have to leave your coding environment, and you have to interact out there, creating content, networking, connecting with people via open source, and and again, as in the process of doing that, you build your profile. Okay. Let's see here. Just to I would say to give you uh actually before no let's do this already uh so again uh one way that you can uh keep in touch with me if you'd like to i have this newsletter that i usually that i usually use mostly for my students i every week i send some tips and tricks every week i send three links that i came across about technology about career about productivity as well uh your 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 instructor there, Vladimir, he's a productivity nuts I and mean, he loves productivity so he can share a lot in terms of productivity with you guys as well. So here is a link uh, there as well in the screen. Uh, you can have a look at the podcast as well. Easy way is just to go to solocoder.com and that's it. And here's my profile. You can connect with me via that, that, that link and... I, if you want to download the presentation, just scan that code, put your email there, I'll send you the presentation. But uh, I think that's about it for me, at least for now. I'd like to open the floor for any questions and call my BS, okay? So call call me if you if you don't buy what I'm selling you, okay? And thank you. presentation too. Uh, I, I think I can kick, kick start the, the Q&A with one, one, one question that is uh, a very practical one. So you say that we should have a blog, okay, what, where? Should, should I use WordPress? Should no, I no, a hash one? node. The, the, one that, the one that I shared, this one here. This is the place. Yes. Hash node, okay. hash node.com. Yeah. No, actually, here's the thing. You can. That's fine. All, all of them are good. The only thing is that the only thing with hash nodes, the only advantage that I that I I I see hash node has is that if you have your own domain, you can link, you can you can hook up your domain to your blog, and then your domain becomes your blog. So you cannot do that with those other platforms. That's the only advantage, the only edge, and also. Actually, let me let me mention one more thing. Hash node. Well, dev dev dot dot two is focused on development as well. Yeah, but it does not have the the at least not the free hookup to your own domain. Okay, but hash node has. Right. So I give you to the class. Will have a question. Yeah. You want me to come over there? Uh, I can hear. Yeah. Can you hear? Yeah. My pleasure. I really like the concept of how can you position yourself so your dream job finds you. Um, one of the words that I latched onto was staying hungry. And I was curious if you had any advice for those, you know, walls of motivation or self confidence when we're doing all these things like writing and meeting new people and contributing to open source and putting yourself out there. Um, if you have any advice on just how to keep that train moving. Okay. Um, okay, we'll thank for the question and thank you for, for uh, the nice words there. A device to keep uh, to keep you going. I, 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 I think I will get back to one of the things that I mentioned there, which is None of those things will will be 
the final solution or the final, you know, I'm just going to do this and that's going to do it for me. Uh, so sometimes, I'll be honest with you, sometimes when you are hungry for for a job and you need the job, not not in a year's time frame, but you need a job for, you know, for tomorrow, it's hard to invest time in energy, sometimes money, because I know you have to go to places, maybe uh, doing something that will not will not give you the reward right away. So it is hard to stick to doing things that the, re the reward will not come very quickly. Uh, I think that's maybe not necessarily exactly where you are coming from, but I'll, I'll tell you this, over and over again, the people that I see with the most success in this industry are the ones that have pursued this kind of path. And also the other thing that I, I, I see very often is that they did not necessarily set out from the get-go to achieve what they have come to achieve. It was more of a, they stumble upon meetups and they stumbled upon this open source thing and then they gave it a shot, but without too much expectation. So my, my, I know it's hard. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not simple, but try not to put too much pressure on the results too quickly, because if you put too much pressure on the results coming too quickly, you will get disappointed and you will stop doing them and you stop doing. So if you want to embrace any one of the things that I'm, I'm mentioning to you here, don't, maybe don't try all, all of them. Maybe try the one that even though if you don't get the result right away, but you can still keep going because you may enjoy doing that. You may enjoy blogging. You may enjoy going to the meetup. That enjoyment on itself of doing that thing if you don't enjoy very quickly, you're gonna you're gonna stop doing that. Uh, if you do enjoy, hopefully the result will come out at the end of the during the process. But at least if you enjoy, you're gonna be doing that without such a sacrifice. You know. Uh, again, I gave you three options here. There are many many other things out there that you can that you can be doing. But uh, I don't know. Hope that this lands somewhere there. Will let me know if I if this is only BS or if you have a follow up there. Let me know. I, I really appreciate the perspective. Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah, if you have for questions, uh, different. Yeah, I noticed um, you're kind of biased towards blog posts, and I was just wondering if you've ever uh, inter interviewed somebody on your podcast who used social media. To gain a following, I noticed that there's a lot of people who post tutorials, resources, those kinds of things on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. It seems kind of like that's the future of blog posts. Okay. Um, maybe it is. Maybe it is, and maybe I'm just an old guy. That's possible as well. Okay. So I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not scared of that. But but yes, actually, let me open up here the podcast, and there is one guy. I'm not. I don't think it's it's. Uh, it's on TikTok or anything like that, but there's one guy that uses social media very, very well, and I'm talking specifically about about Twitter and about LinkedIn. Let me let me see if I can find this guy here. Um, okay, let me just scroll down. This guy has such a great following. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh my! Oh my! Okay, here, Danny Thompson. Let me tell you, this guy is has such an energy. I mean, no no doubt he was the one guest that had the most energy. He was almost overwhelming to me. So he uses Twitter and LinkedIn quite well, quite a lot. That's that's basically 
I think his main strategy, he does some other things. I don't know if he's doing something with TikTok or not. Maybe he's doing, maybe I think that at this point he's doing something as well with, uh, with Instagram, but social, I have not seen anyone doing better than this guy. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, I do have a question here. Maybe it's not related, or maybe I need to make some research on it. But you mentioned this, like uh, people like Caleb, they're making a full time out of uh, open source projects. And I'm just wondering, what my little understanding about the open projects is like um, a pre application you choose to be developed by. Uh, uh, also by free participation from developers. So how can a person make money out of like uh, open source contributions? Is it only for the administration or? Okay, so so I missed a few words here and there, but if I if I can just summarize, you're asking how can someone make money from open source? Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. So. So first, there are many aspects to open source. Okay, so uh, yes, there is the coding aspects, but there is the education on top of coding as well, on top of the platform. For example, I'll just mention a little bit about my my case. I worked a lot with open source, but I never wrote one single line of code for this open source project that I worked with. I was doing educational content on top of this open source. And guess what? And the site is still there. I I don't make content for that site anymore, but I used to have a paid website for this open source project that people would go to my website, they would pay to my website to have access to my training content. And I was providing training content for that platform that was open source. So training is one, one way to make money on open source. Uh, in particular here, uh, Caleb, what he's doing, and he's using a very it's not very popular. It's a very unique way of monetizing open source, but he is using sponsorship. So for example, if you use, if you are uh, using his project, his open source project to benefit you and your company, maybe you want to give him a few dollars a month to, to get, to keep him going and to keep him engaged with the project. Because sometimes what happens with open source is that people start and then some people start to use their open source project and then they abandon. Now, for him to keep going, he built this open source, this, uh, sorry, this sponsorship opportunity that people can contribute to his uh, GitHub, open, GitHub sponsorship account and he can make money, he can keep coding, keep building the project with contributors as well and keep providing value to this community of people that are using his open source project. So that's one way. Another way, for example, uh, he is building the projects. Now, there might be people that are helping companies to implement that open source. Okay, this company wants to use this open source. Great. Oh, it's free. Yes, it's free to get the code. But guess what? Maybe it's a little bit complicated to apply that project to your company. So maybe you're gonna hire a consultant that will help you to apply that open source project into your organization. So, I mean, and if you look back at uh, things like uh, Linux, Linux, there is an entire uh, ecosystem of companies providing service to Linux. Guess what? Linux is open source, but there are companies behind Linux helping other companies to implement that environment, okay? so. So, yeah, so I mentioned about training, about consultancy in, in, in that particular project. Again, there are smaller projects and there, there are larger projects as well. There are all kinds of sizes of, of open source projects out there, including, for example, something like WordPress. Guess what? WordPress is free. But guess what? If you look at sites like Upwork, there are thousands and thousands of, of uh, contractors that you can hire to help you with WordPress. But here, WordPress is open source. Does that make sense? Uh, I, I don't remember the, the name of the person that asked the question, but does it make sense? Yeah, it definitely does, yeah. Thank you. Okay, 
Okay. A pleasure. I think we have time for one more question, and I, I can see someone in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so kind of a cliche question, but in your career, I'm very interested to know what helped you advance further in, the, in your career. Was it more networking, or was it more of our technical knowledge? So if it was, so what helped me advance my career? If it was networking or my coding knowledge? Okay, uh, I'll tell you this. Yes, the technical aspects are important. However, I have chosen a path about 16 years ago to go on my own, to do my own business, to do my own my own thing. And yes, I'm, I'm still a technical guy, but I think that the, the soft skills that I had to build around my, my career and networking is one of those. Uh, speaking is one of those. Let me tell you, 16 years ago, I mean, I could be here talking to you guys, to this group, but I would be a very different person. I will be very awkward. And not that I'm not awkward. I, I might be awkward in a different sense, but I would be very, very shy, very reluctant on talking to a group of people like, like yourselves. So the soft skills part of my career is part of me is what really made a huge difference for me. As I develop my, my content via videos, via podcasting, I'm not into, too much into writing, even though I'm, I'm, I'm working on a book right now, but those things throughout my career is really what allowed me to propel my career forward. Uh, no question about that. Yes, the technical aspects, it's almost like it's a given. Oh, he's a technologist. He knows what he's doing. But then what you bring on top of that, your capacity of connecting with people, of discussing complex things in a, in a simpler way that a business person will understand that, and a tech, being able to talk tech and being able to talk non-tech, it is important. So, Long, long, uh, sh long story short, I would say that the soft skill size, not only the network, and that work is one element of soft skills that was important, but I would not say that, but I'll, I'll, and I would not say that coding was more important. My technical abilities are important, but my soft skills made all the difference. Yes, it, it, it they made all the difference. Okay. Pleasure. All right. That's all. Once more, thank you for, for being here with us. Uh, I owe you one. Anytime, anytime. You know that whenever you call, I'll be there. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Have a good one, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>